simple exponential functions. So today I'm going to talk about the simplest of exponential functions and as you can see we are going to talk about some graphs and properties of these functions but let us start with the definition. So what is the most simple exponential function? It's a function in the form f y equals a to the power of x. So whenever you have a function y equals a to the power of x it's called a simple exponential function. Here a is the base, so a is the base and x is the exponent. Now we know something about those two numbers. So first we know how to raise a base to a rational exponent. So we know the meaning of expression, expressions like a to the power of 4 thirds, for example. We know that it really means that we have to calculate the third root of a to the power of 4. We also know what the, what the meaning is of a to the power of 7 halves. Okay? It's the square root of a to the power of 7 and so on, so on. So x in this case can be either a rational number like 4 thirds, 7 halves and so on or an irrational number. And what is the meaning of raising a to the irrational number? Well this is something I'm going to talk about in a minute or two. But before that let us look at a. If we want to be able to calculate something like this, we have to be sure that we can take any root, any root, either the square root or third root, fourth root and so on. And you already know that if you want to take the root of a number, you have to have the positive number if you want to do that. Uh, since there is also the possibility of having a negative exponent, for example, a to the power of of uh, negative seven halves okay so it means well you may guess it's one over a to the seven halves and this would be one over the square root of a to the power of seven if you want to allow also for negative exponents you have to have a the base which is not only non-negative, it has to be only positive. The value of a equals zero is not allowed exactly because then this could not be evaluated. a to the power of neg negative seven halves could not be evaluated possibly because zero would get into the denominator and you would run into trouble. So the only possible values for the base that we are going to talk about in what follows are positive values of a. So these two expressions here allow for non-negative a. They would allow also for a being equal to zero. But since we want our function to be general and, and, and uh, defined also for negative exponents, we exclude zero from this and we demand that a is only positive. Moreover, we demand that a is different from one and the reason for that it's, is just that we want this function to be interesting. If a were 1, the function would be a constant. 1 to any power is just 1. So we want it to be interesting and therefore we exclude also the value of a being equal to 1. So this is what we suppose about, about the base. Base has to be positive and different from 1. The number x here, the exponent, is a real number. So let me give you some examples of uh, exponential functions. So the first one here and we will talk about these two in particular later. So the first one is y equals 2 to the power of x and the second one is y equals 1 half to the power of x. So in this case the base is 2. Okay, So we have a to the power of x is the same as 2 to the power of x and in this second case here a equals one half. Okay? So we can have bases of any value, any, any value is acceptable which is positive and different from one. 
Now, as I promised, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about what is the meaning of raising the base to an irrational base. So, what does it mean to raise the base to an ir irrational number? A typical example of an irrational number is the square root of 2. You may remember that we showed using the proof of reduction. Uh, so, uh, we use this proof to show the square root of 2 is not rational and therefore it has to be irrational. Here is the approximation of the square root of 2. You can get such number using your calculator and it will approximate it by a decimal, but you already know that irrational numbers have non-recurrent decimal, um, decimals, so they follow forever and never recur, never repeat, they just go on forever. So, the question here we want to address is what is the meaning of raising 2 to the power of square root of 2? Okay, now, what we are going to do to get the answer to this is the following. We are going to close in on the square root of 2 from both sides. So, look here. Square root of 2 is for sure less than 2 and greater than 1. Okay, we know that because, look here, this is the approximation. Then we can move closer to the square root of 2. We can say well, square root of 2 is less than 1.5, but greater than 1.4. You see 1.4 here. We can get closer even now. Square root of 2 is less than 1.42 and greater than 1.41. Again, look here, compare. And even closer, square root of 2 is less than 1.415 and greater than 1.414. And we could go on forever like that. And what is interesting here, that these numbers 1, 1.4, 1.41 and etc. are all rational numbers. These are numbers which can be replaced by fractions. For example, 1.41 1 is 141 hundredths. Okay? 1.4 is 14 over, over 10 and so on. So all these are rational and also these numbers here are rational. So we have a sequence of rational numbers on the left hand on the left side and the sequence of rational number to the right of square root of 2 and they are closing in on the square root of 2. Uh, they are moving closer and closer to it from both sides and finally they will reach it. But when? Well, when we do infinitely many steps. Okay. Now, what we can do now is to think about 2 raised to the square of 2. Since this is true, then this must be true. 2 to the 1 has to be less than 2 to the square root of 2 and this has to be less than 2 to the power of 2. The reason for that we want this to behave correctly and, and any function 2 to the power of x should be continuous and therefore we want also these numbers here to close in on the number 2 raised to the square root of 2. So now there were numbers 1, 1 1.4, 1.41 here we have the numbers 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 1.4, 2 to the power of 1.41 and so on and on the other side 2 to the power of 2 corresponding to 2, 2 to the power of 1.5 corresponding to 1.5, 2 to the power of 1.42 corresponding to this and so on. So again we have two sequences of numbers and these sequences should be should should close in on the number 2 to the square root of 2 as well as did these two sequences close in on the number of square root of 2. So, if you use your calculator, you know what the meaning of, for example, what the meaning of 2 raised to the 1.41 is. Well, actually, it's 2 to the power of 141 hundredths and it means that this is the one hundredths root of 2 to the power of 141. Okay, so these are all, these are all the powers with rational exponent and also these. So they have a perfectly understood meaning. We, we know what we are talking about when, when we have these powers. 
and they are closing in on this number in the middle, 2 to the square root of 2. Here, to the right, I have evaluated 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 to the power of 1.4 is approximately this number, 2.639, 2 to the power of 149 is this and so on. 2 to the power of 1.42 is this number and so on. So this sequence of numbers is evaluated here and this sequence of numbers is evaluated there. And you may see that also these numbers are getting closer and closer to each other. So the unknown 2 raised to the power of uh, square root of 2 is somewhere between them. And as we go on to greater and greater precision, we see that this and this should finally become one number, and that number is 2 to the power of square root of 2. So this is what we mean by raising the number to the irrational number. We approximate this irrational number from both sides by rational numbers, and we believe that this answer should lie between these two approximations and as these two approximations close in on this number we can get the idea about the the value of this number okay so so much about what it means to have a real exponent not only rational not only integer exponent but any real exponent in the exponential function so now what does the graph of the simple exponential function look like so to learn that, well, there is no better way perhaps than using a computer program called GeoGebra. So let's move on to the GeoGebra. Here I have a model of the exponential function. You see this curve here. So this is the function f of x equals 2 to the power of x. To show you how it works, so first let me remove some of the elements and what I what is left here is this point here. So this point has the coordinates 2 and 4. Can we understand that? This function should be the function 2 to the power of x. So if I take x being 2, 2 to the power of 2 should be the coordinate here. 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So therefore this point is here. Now this slider here on the left allows me to change the value of x, the value of x coordinate of this point, and as I change it, this point will move on the curve. So let me increase this value to number 3, okay, like this. So if we have number 3, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So therefore I, I put this point with coordinates 3 and 8 on the graph. If we go to a greater value, well, it will then disappear from the screen because if I have 4 uh, like this, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, so it's way above the top of this picture, so I cannot see it. But let me move back, let me take 2 to the power of 1, so let's, let's set the value of x to 1 like this, so when you have the x value of 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2. So this point is very important. At 1, the function has the value equal to the base. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. And 2 is the base of this uh, exponential function here. Now, let me change x to the value of 0. So if x is 0, we have 2 to the power of 0. This point will have the coordinates 2 to the power of 0. And as you already know, 2 to any number except for 0 when raised to 0 is 1. So 2 to the power of 0 is exactly 1 and this point is a very important point on any exponential curve point with coordinates 0 and 1. Now if I take negative value of x for example negative 1 like this here we have the point 2 well, we have minus 1 and the vertical coordinate y coordinate should be 2 to the power of negative 1. Uh, well, 2 to the power of negative 1, you already know that it's 1 half. And exactly, you see, you have 0 0.5 here. When we go to negative 2, like this, we have the coordinates negative 2, and the vertical coordinate is 1 quarter. And why? Because 2 to the power of negative 2, 2 to the power of negative 2, 
is 1 over 2 to the power of 2, which is 1 over 4, which is 1 quarter, and so on. So if I move the x to the left, I see that the value decreases. For example, here at, at negative 4, it would be 2 to the power of negative 4, which is 1 over 2 to the power of 4, and it's 1 over 16, so it's 1 sixteenths, and so on. What is interesting and, and very important, as you move your point on the curve to the left, it approaches the x-axis from above, but of course will never reach it, okay? So this function has to be asymptotic to the x-axis, or we say that the x-axis seems to be, well, it is, its horizontal asymptote. You are already familiar with the concept of asymptotes. It's the same concept as with uh, rational functions, as, as you saw there. Okay, so this is the curve, and now I can move this point back to the position where I started, to the position with 2, okay, not like this, and make visible these two cardinal points that I had there uh, in the beginning. So the first important point, which is on every exponential function is the point with coordinates 0 and 1, and the reason for that is that any base raised to the power of 0 is 1, and the second point is the point with coordinates 1 and a, where a is the base, the base here is 2, so it's point with coordinates 1 and a, and this is there because a to the power of 1 is always a, okay? Now, what we have to do in, in this investigation, before I get back to my uh, notes, is the following. We should try to investigate what effect does the value of base have on this uh, function. So this function here had the base equal to 2. This was 2. Now I can use this first slider here on the top to change the base. As you already know, the base has to be positive. It cannot be 0, it has to be positive. So let me decrease the base. Well, you see what happens. And, well, it cannot be even number 1, because if base is 1, well, the function becomes very uninteresting, it's just a constant. But what I want to test or show you is the, the base with the value of 0 0.5, so 1 half, exactly. So now we have the base equal to 1 half. This is the base 1 half, so 0 0.5. And now the function looks very different from the original shape. It seems to be strictly decreasing now at this point. So why? Why is this so? So imagine you have, uh, say, I will just remove these two points, you have x equal to 1. If you have x equal to 1, like this, if you have x equal to 1, then you have 0.5 to the power of 1. It is 0.5. So this point with coordinates 1 and 0.5 is here. If you have x equal to 0, again, you have this point. It crosses the y-axis at 1. But if you increase x to the value of 2, say, okay, you will have 0 0.2, 0 0.5 to the power of 2, or 1 half to the power of 2. So it's 1 half times 1 half, so it's less than 1 half to the power of 1. So it has to decrease. As you increase the value of x, the y value has to decrease because your base is 0 0.5. And for example, 0 0.5 to the power of 3, when, when you take 3, is less than 0 0.5 to the power of 2, because 0.5 to the power of 3 means 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5, okay? Now, when you go for negative x values, for example, negative 1, like this, here, if you have a negative exponent, what you have is 0.5 to the power of negative 1, okay? So, you may see that this is actually 2. So, you can check it, and I will show it to you later. This increases. So, when you decrease the x, to the negative numbers, the value will increase, okay? So this is a very different function, it's strictly decreasing, but what is true again is that the horizontal asymptote is again the x-axis, so it approaches the x-axis from above 
as x approaches infinity. Okay, I think now we can go back to my notes and there is a question which I would like to address. Is there any relationship between the following two functions? So these are exactly the functions that we studied in the GeoGebra a second ago. So the first one was y equals 2 to the power of x and the second one was y equals 1 half to the power of x. What you saw there was that there was a correspondence. This red function was the function y equals 2 to the power of x while the green one was 1 half to the power of x. So why do they look like this? So they seem to be uh, symmetrical with respect to the y-axis. Well actually if you use the y-axis as a mirror, you can reflect the red function to the uh, green one and vice versa. Okay, So if we want to understand why this is so, we should look at this one-half to the power of x. One-half to the power of x is, according to the power laws that you are already, already familiar with, it is one to the power of x over two to the power of x. 1 to the power of x equals 1, and you have 1 over 2 to the power of x. According to one of these laws, this is the same as 2 to the power of minus x. Okay? So, it tells you that, well, actually, this was the function value f2 of x, according to this notation. This green function is the function f2. So, this is f2 of x, and it's 2 to the power of negative x f1 of x, f1 of x, while was 2 to the power of x. So, if you take x, for example, x with the value of 1, like this, this is x, then it tells you that f1 of x, so this would be the f1 of x, so let me, let me replace this with, with x, if I want to be more general, Okay, this is x, and that was f1 of x, and here I have minus x here. Let me look at this value here. These should be the same. This value here is f2 of minus x. Okay, let me look what f2 of minus x really is. So here I have f2 of x, so let me replace x by minus x. So it's 2 to the minus, and instead of x I have minus x, which is 2 to the x. So these two values here have to be the same. So these functions have to be each other's reflection with respect to the y-axis. Since the first one, the red one, was increasing, the green one must then be decreasing, because the reflection has to be decreasing. You can imagine that yourself. Now, the final part, properties of simple exponential functions. So this is a table with properties which I would advise you to copy or print out into your notebooks. Properties of simple exponential functions y equals a to the power of x where a is positive real number not equal to 1. You saw there were two cases. The first case that we studied was the case of the function y equal 2 to the power of x. This is the example. So the base here is greater than 1. Base a greater than 1. When the base is greater than 1, the function looks like this. The second function that we studied of this kind was the function y equals 1 half to the power of x. And in this case, the base 1 half was between 1 and 0. So it was positive, but less than 1. So this is the case of the, of the exponential functions which, are, which have the base between 0 and 1. So look at these and compare. The domain in both cases is the set of all real numbers. So you can take any real number and calculate a to the power of x. Okay? In both cases. As for the range, the range of this function is also the same in both cases. You have all positive numbers. There is no zero in the range because this function never gets to, the, to this, never cuts the x-axis, so it's always above it but closer and closer to it. First case, 
the function is strictly increasing. As you can see, this is strictly increasing. In the second case, the function is strictly decreasing. As for the further properties, f is bounded from below by 0. So 0 here is the lower bound of this function and also the lower bound of this second function. So in both cases it's bounded from below by 0 and you may see that it's not bounded from above because whatever line you take, horizontal line, this function will always cross it and get to the values which are greater than the value which is here. So it's not bounded. You cannot have its upper bound. It also, this is true for this case. It's not bounded from above. In both cases, the function is 1 to 1, which can be seen by imagining the set of horizontal lines. And you see that this and this function both pass the horizontal line text, test. And since they pass such test, then they have to be 1 to 1 both. Uh, f has not got any strict minimum or maximum point. This is true for both functions. There is not any point which could be understood as a strict minimum or a strict maximum. Now the asymptotic behavior, and this is what is interesting here. As x approaches infinity in the first, in this case, as x approaches infinity, as we move to the right, y approaches infinity. It exponentially grows and very quickly. And as x approaches negative infinity, when we move to the left, y approaches 0 from above. So the value of 0 is being approached from above by the function values. In the second case, as x approaches to infinity, as we move to the right, y approaches 0 from above, as you can see yourself, and as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. It shoots up to infinity as you move to the left. So these are the properties of these functions and uh, later on, maybe next day, we'll talk about more general exponential functions, but that is to come.